They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by... L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions. Harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Good Foods Co-op, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mills, Your Village Shop. Hey, Mrs. Farmer. Hey, Mr. Farmer. Welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. You cooking? You know what? We got all kinds of stuff going on. Busy, busy, busy day. Busy time around the farm. We finally got some decent weather. Now, last week we canned meat. It's like we've done it forever. Right. But there are guidelines that you might want to check. If you have any doubts, check out the National Center for Home Food Preservation. That is nchfp.uga.edu. Now, you don't have to have this lid on. You can take those off. Once it's sealed, you're good right. to go. When you're storing these, do not stack. And we get some great tips from our Facebook friends mm -hmm. who, who say, here's the way I do it, so on and so forth. We're gonna do two real easy recipes. Now, obviously, soups, stews, right. um, stroganoff. I wanna reference our venison stroganoff recipe right here real quick. It's just onions and flour and your meat we did from venison, but you can do that with your beef as well. Quick and easy, here's our chicken. Let's drain that juice out, dump our chicken out. Now look at that. I want you to look at the consistency of that. Now that's like the chicken that you would buy in the packs. Look at the consistency. It. You could eat a whole can. I could eat that whole can myself. Mm -hmm. We're just going to take this. I'm going to bust that up and get it just like I like it. Let's cut some pieces of celery up real fine. Okay. I don't want them too crunchy. Everybody's got consistency deals. We're going to take a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper to taste. And we're going to come back with our mayonnaise. That's about three heaping tablespoons. Let's get our consistency like we want it. Look at that. Fresh ready. celery. We're going to put a few cranberries in here. I can't believe how good that chicken tastes. Really I'm good. I'm telling you, you can't beat it. Now, let's go ahead and take, uh, let's crunch some pecans up in there. Right. Put a little Dijon mustard in there. Just a couple spurts. Oh, I love you. Make me crunchy. 1950s era. I love it. That's good. Just, just All right. Minute. Would you like some grapes in there too? Some people put grapes. Let's do put some grapes in there. And to add a little more sweet, just some grapes. Would you like a little zest of lemon in there? A you little could. squeeze of lemon that gives it a good. You talk about quick and easy and already cooked. You know where it comes from. Look at that. Looks like something you get at a restaurant. Looks delicious. Absolutely quick and easy. Take this and spread it on a piece of bread. That's when I go ahead and cut that in half. Now, we're starving, as usual. And look right there. Oh my. Oh my. That was quick, too. I like it's that. It's just fresh. Delicious. Good job. Look at there. Pork. What are we going to do with the pork? Kids are finicky eaters. What is this just about? Any kid will eat sloppy joes. Right. They'll eat barbecue. Quick and easy barbecue. No smell-o-vision here. But look at that. I'm just telling you. It's unbelievable, really. 
I'll go there. Now let's run through the times again. If you're going to do pints, 75 minutes pints, how much for quarts? Uh, 90. Unless it's fish. Fish has to go a little longer. Now take some of your favorite barbecue sauce. Now this is, is for kids, and a lot of people like to barbecue like this. We're just going to take this over here. And this is for quick and easy. You run it in, you run it out. You want something substantial. Now recently we had a few additions to the family. They're precious. Maury and Mona. And you know what? There's a little bit of moving around we had to do. And that requires a little bit of back and forth. So let's go, while I'm stirring this, out and see what we had to do to move the sheep around. Let's go check on Maury and Mona, <laughs> our newest additions. All right, you ready for some disorganized chaos? Always. <laughs> All right, here's our plan. Now, we've got two new babies, and that's the new one down there, that's Maury. Okay, now what we have to do is we've separated from those for about three days. Right. Um, we've talked to different people. The babies can regulate their body temperature and they can handle rain after about three days. They've been in the chicken coop, which is now the jug, as Janine called it. That's a place to separate them, let them bond. And we also had to separate the dogs from the sheep, which I think has been a little traumatic for Moses yeah. because he wants to go back over there. We're going to see how everything goes and you're going to see just totally chaos. <laughs> chaotic. Here's, here's what I'm thinking on these guys. She's going to want corn. You grab the baby. Okay. So hopefully that's incentive for milkweed to follow you. And I'll have her head buried in a bucket of corn. All right. We'll try to go over here, pull the fence up. Not let the others escape. Not let the others escape. And get them in. Bring her in. And so, gosh, only knows what's going to happen. Now, Myrtle, right there, the one that's shedding, she was not real nice to Mona. So Look, at she's standing up to her. Yeah. She's not letting her Milk near baby. will not let her near the baby because she <laughs> under, I think she gets it. For somebody who's got a big sheep operation, they see this kind of stuff every day. It's new to us, and we're sharing this with you. It's so enjoyable for us just to be out here and watch these guys. <laughs> you never know You never know what they're going to do. There's all kinds of behaviors She's not going to put up with it, is she? Ah. Nope. They all have personalities. I can tell from 100 yards away, her voice, her voice, her voice. Have very distinct personalities. Peaceful, relaxing mm -hmm. in it. They like to go up here in these rocks. Yeah, they do. And they can wear their hooves down a little bit when they come up here and they rub against that old burnt thing. They all have black on their back from rubbing underneath there. They've got quite the little place here. Yeah, they do. They got it nice. All right, now, a lot of people say, oh, I like your goats. Those aren't goats, those are hair sheep. And if you see right over there, they're starting to shed, especially Myrtle, she's looking pretty rough, but they got the we got our dogs here that we're not supposed to pet. We never pet them. First time they've ever been pet. Yeah, they need one. You know pet. what? We have a, we have very lovable dogs who are good guard dogs, and we do pet them quite a bit. Don't talk about it. So anyhow, we tried a little experiment. We think it's a bit early to let them in with the babies. They're a little bit rough. They want to play, so we're going to keep them separate for a little bit longer. Just his bark from a mile away will scare every mailman for 80 miles. The mail lady wouldn't Big, come up. <laughs> deep bark. Yeah. And she's just you know, like happy to be here. But he's got a good, big, mean bark, even though I don't think he heard her flee. No. But he's keeping all the bad guys out. We're gonna bring the chickens in here shortly. It's a very pastoral scene up there. The babies are taking a nap. Everything's good. We'll let you back in there once they get a little bit bigger and can defend themselves when you're playing. All right, we got them in. Yay, I feel better. Yay. I feel better with it in. All right, I'll go do some more cooking. Let's eat. All right. We're there for our quick and easy snack. Wow. Just like that, we've taken our canned meats and we've turned them into something quick and easy and substantial. You right. want the first bite? Yeah. That was good. That was not a bite. Here's a bite. That's really good. Mm, good job. Mm, 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 mm. And I'm full. I feel good. I'm not full yet. I'm going to oh. eat some more. But, you know, <laughs> first of all, fall's coming up. I like the cold smoke stuff. We like to store our hams. We like to smoke bacon, so on and so forth. Let's go visit my buddy John Akers. 
we're going to build us a smokehouse. We're going to show you step by step really? how to do this. Interesting. He is one talented dude. Yes, he is. I'm going to eat some more meat. John Akers, craftsman extraordinaire. You laugh, but you've done some wonderful work uh, all over the, well, all over the state and other states. I've seen some of your stuff, and it's quite amazing. Yeah. You and I have had many conversations about doing things the old-fashioned way, uh, about raising pigs. You've seen what we're doing around here. We're trying to really take and do as much as we can on our place as far as food preparation, as far as canning, smoking. We have a little smokehouse, but we're stepping it up a notch. And you and I had a conversation. I said, John. What would it take to make a good stout, stable, it's going to be here from 20 years smokehouse? And you said... A good foundation. A good foundation. Which means you've already been in here and you have dug a little area out. Well, we've, we've laid out a pad space. You've got some little anchor pilot holes. I'm going to put you some mortar and mix in there that's going to be about a 4,000 plus PSI. That's pounds per square inch. Gotcha. What we're going to put on this will be a four or five stack high block just for your footer and foundation and to seal out the bugs. And then when you get started with the uh, rest of it, we'll just plate it up and frame it up like a little old house. That's something I found out down here. If, I, if we had, if it wasn't on a pad, we started having bug issues. Yeah. You get bugs in your hand, they actually drill into it and a lot of people know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So we're gonna try to stay away from that. But let's talk about this particular smokehouse and tell us the basic way it's gonna look when we get it up. You're gonna have a hot box That'll come off the side. Mm -hmm. And this is fairly through. close to the, to the ah, cabin. And, and it's okay. And the, the prevailing wind's coming out of the west. You're on a hill, you'll get a good draw out of this. But your hot box will be over there. You'll have a flue pipe into the bottom of the pit. Mm -hmm. And this will be open once we get our foundation set for anything of it. And then the smoke will rise up to it and we'll have a little vent stack. And it'll look like just a little bitty old outhouse for the better, better way of saying it. But it'll just be a little, little single door open up and it'll have some frames on it. You can hang your, I mean you can put Rot rust, you can hang chickens, you can smoke anything you want to smoke in it. You know what, and that's the great thing about this. This is going to be solid. My fire's going to be over here. Down here I had to create my, kind of create my own fire. I, I like having the box out, out here. From the back of the smokehouse here to the front of the firebox. Seven feet. Dimensions? About seven feet. Seven feet, yeah. Perfect. You'll have about a three by three box here. Uh, six foot tall frame house on top of the foundation. And then your, your, your hot box down there that you can put your hickory in is going to be just enough to smolder some smoke and keep it rolling and keep it stoked and you can set the damper on the door. And, you know, your heat stays over here but your smoke comes out Your smoke here. is going to fill the whole box up and it'll seal up just, just like a refrigerator. It'll have a little bit of vent at the top and we could set a little, uh, a little stack up where we can put a flapper on it where you can kind of hold a little smoke and, and let a little more out if you want to. So. But anyway, it's, uh, we're actually going to have you a little pocket built on this with a shed roof where you can actually store your hickory in there and keep it dry. I like that. Yeah, it'll look pretty good. So Now, the whole idea here is to season our meat. We can even age our meat in here, hang it, keep it for, you know, a ham takes a goodly amount of months to get yeah. ready. Yeah. Now, this is something I want close to my cabin. Uh, no critters can get in here. Absolutely wonderful. I tell you what, I can't wait to see this project getting underway. You've got some concrete over here in the wheelbarrow. You've got some water over here. I suppose today what you're going to do is, well, you tell me. I'm going to pour the pad. Okay. I'm going to take these half stacks. They're right. just like a regular 8-inch concrete block, but I want to set those in the wet mortar and so that I've got them bonded and sealed in this pad as we pour it. Gotcha. I'll level it all up, and when we come back, it sets up. We'll lay these regular 8-inch block on top of the filler foundation. up. I'll leave the port out the side to vent our smoke in with, so you'll see that when we get to it. I'm gonna stand out of your way and watch what you do. If you need a hand, that's all you're gonna get. I'll give you. I'll give you a call. That was uh, some straight cement, so that it raises the PSI and it makes the foundation a lot stronger than what it normally would be just out of straight sack creek.
hey, I see where you're going. Now, you've got the fancy schmancy block, so on the outside, and when you stack these up right here, it'll look really... You'll have some character to it. Yeah. It'll look just like a little block building. It'll look like a little bit of stone. I'll make your mortar joints a little bit rougher than what they normally would, and mm -hmm. it'll all blend in good. But this first course we put in those half stacks, you just pitch a little dirt around it mm -hmm. when you're done, or some little gravel, make sure that it's got some drainage around it. So when we get up to about here, so like you said, you open the door and you're not reaching down, you're right there. Yeah. No, we won't reach into it. I like where you're going here. And your smoke will roll in that end. Mm -hmm. Our next piece will leave this open. You'll have a block block, a three-quarter block right here, and we'll have a gap coming through there. Mm -hmm. And I'll lay you a flue pipe, just like a stack chimney, a mm -hmm. flue pipe. So your flue pipe will come through there from your hot box over there. So now, you don't have to worry about burning nothing down while you're doing that. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, I really like where you're going. What's the outside going to look like with the wood part we'll up We'll wrap here? it western cedar and look like a cabin. Gotcha. So. Man, oh man, this is exciting stuff. So this has got it set up. We'll come back another day down the road. Okay. I'm looking forward to this, man. This will be this fun. Is fun. What's mm -hmm. our next project? I don't know. We'll be thinking about that. What about root cellar? Okay. Root cellar. Uh, you got a mountainside? I got a mountainside. All right, all right, root cellar. All right. Got one more thing we forgot to put in the chicken salad. I love those. Red buds. Mm -hmm. Red bud trees right now are full of these. They're so good. I tell you what, we had a visit from a special guest not too long ago. And she showed us some stuff around the farm that you can pick off the ground and eat that's very good for you. Let's talk about edible plants that you can find in your own yard. Yummy. Including redbud. Jennifer. Hi. You pointed up here, what we got? We have got garlic mustard. This hmm. is an invasive plant, so but it's, it's not yummy. from here. Grows everywhere. People will try to get rid of this in their yards, but it grows pretty much it's anywhere. It's got a garlic smell. Mm -hmm. It's great in savory recipes. You can eat it raw or cooked. And well, there's of plenty of it, so you don't have to worry about pulling up too much. Now let me ask you this. Is this year, is it good year round? Is it better in the spring when the leaves are I would get better it now. in the spring? I would get it now, yeah. Which is the way most plants, by the way, in mm -hmm. early spring is when Later in the year, the more bitter things tend to taste, and, mm -hmm. and some people prefer that, but right now is probably when um, it would be most suitable. Henbit. 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 Good for drawing and making tea. Has really? a very potent smell. If you crush it up, um, grows like crazy in people's gardens and in their yards, and they're pulling it up, and can't miss it by the smell. Very distinctive smell when you're mm -hmm. mowing and you hit a bunch yes. of this. You always smell that. This is what you can smell in the summertime. So you make a Tend tea it. out of that. Tea. Do you dry the leaves first? Or yes. You can... you can dry them in the sun or in the oven or dehydrator, but it makes a nice tea. Well, son of a gun, this is an old-fashioned thing. Does it have any caffeine in it or just, I don't just the taste? So. Hen bit. Who knew? All right, a lot of people are going to recognize this. I recognize it because my dad used to make me dig it up out of the yard. Oh, no. He hated his dandelions. He had this little fork-like tool that I had to pop uh, them out. Yep, that was fun. Big, long roots. They're tough. Yeah. Yeah. Well, too bad you didn't dry the roots and use them for a coffee or a tea. Really? Mm-hmm. The roots are edible. Actually, all the parts of a dandelion are edible, except the fuzzy part that would probably get caught in your throat. The fuzzy part. I wouldn't eat part. that part. I wouldn't eat the fuzzies. But dandelions are fantastic. Um, so these are good, like, just as a salad? They are. You can cook them. They're, they have a, a bitter, unique taste, which mm -hmm. um, we lack in our diet. So that's a good thing. You can cook them. You can dry them. You can eat them fresh. They have more beta carotene than carrots. And wow. they have more iron and calcium than spinach. So they're really, really good for you. It really is flavorful, but mm -hmm. like you say, it's a bit bitter. It is bitter. It Probably is bitter. A good source of power. I like to add a little sweet um, dressing or something to it if I use them in a salad. Like a vinaigrette. Mm -hmm. Now, you said there's something else in here we need to look at. Wood sorrel. It's my favorite. Wood sorrel. Wood sorrel. It has vitamin C in it, and that's about the only thing it's really known for as far as nutritional value. It's easy to tell because it's three little hearts. It's the first thing I teach children when I do classes. It looks similar to clover, which has more like egg-shaped leaves. These have hearts, but when you eat it, very lemony and tart. 
Ooh. Really a pleasant taste. That is good. It's very good. I want some more of that to get the yep. dandelion taste in my mouth. You eat this raw. If you cook it, it turns dark brown and kind of ugly and loses its flavor. So you want to eat this fresh. That is but really it's good. it's wonderful. My kids love it. Um, we, we like to grab it when we're on the trail. It's refreshing. Really nice plant. I'm glad to know that. Mm -hmm. That's really good. All right, now, usually when you hear the word plantain, you think about little bananas, but... Completely different plant. This plantain. right here. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was a kid, they called this broadleaf, or, or like a variation of this. Is it the same family? Probably. There's broadleaf plantain or common plantain, mm -hmm. and then there's lance leaf or English. The mm -hmm. terms are generally used interchangeably. You can eat this, but it's, it's stringy and tough. Mm -hmm. My favorite use for this is to crush it up. Mm -hmm. You can even chew it up, crush it up, bruise it. And if you get a sting, if um, you have a skin irritation, a rash, a blister while you're out and about, you, you break this up, get it bruised, pack it on there. What's in put there? Put a Band-Aid over it. I'm not sure. This is just an old thing that's been passed down through, It is. It, it, it works so well. So squeeze out. Let's just take a look at what get that looks juice. like. Squeeze the fire out of it and, mm -hmm. just, and just hold it on there. And just put it on there and it's instant relief. You, no you think, kidding. oh, this is so wonderful, yeah. Next yeah. time, I got bees right up there, so next time I get stung, I'm gonna yeah. try that. This is much better than anything you can buy for a sting. Redbud. Redbud tree. Hey, you know what happens when they come out? The crappie are biting. Really? White bass are running. I didn't know that. Generally. Okay. That's a good fishing That's tip. What the old timers say. Well, red buds are very easy to spot. Right. And they have these little flowers in the springtime. Mm -hmm. And these are a wonderful snack. I never knew. I kind of crunchy, sort of nutty, a little bit sweet. And it will not hurt the tree to pull these off and eat them. No they're, harm going, done. they're just going to fall They're just anyway. going to fall off anyway. I eat these fresh and I eat them raw. That's really got a kind of a sweet taste. Mm hmm. Nutty, like they're you fine. Said. They're a little bit crunchy. Now, how do you know all this stuff? Years of practice, reading you know and going out, doing it. That's one of my favorite things so far. Mm -hmm. I love this and the wood sorrel. Probably my two favorites. So far, those are my favorites. Mm -hmm. And most of these things are, are more nutritional than anything you can buy, and they're so readily available. Everyone has them, or or at least some of these things, right in their backyard. I am really kind of shocked at that. I'm eating flowers. <laughs> stuff that you walk over and step on every day chickweed 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 it's um very mild wonderful for anyone with any kind of upset stomach um sore throat it's very um soothing in your system very mild Just tastes wonderful mm -hmm. this is one of my favorite plants um in a survival type situation a lot of times you can even dig through the snow if you know where to look for this already and find it it's about the first thing to come up in the spring, and it'll stick around with us until it hits about 80, 85 degrees consistently, and then this is gonna die off, mm -hmm. and it's gonna go away till next year. But it is a wonderful plant. Chickweed, I, just the leaves. Mm -hmm. You can eat the stems too, and the flowers. There's little bitty white flowers. I use this as a spinach replacement. I use it spinach dip, except I have chickweed dip, and you can put it in lasagna, anything. Wonderful, wonderful. plant. I like it a lot. And everybody, well, not everybody, knows what these are, and they are. May apples. And the, the reason they have that name is because they have a little piece of fruit, and here's what they look like. The fruit is gonna be on a two-year plant. It's gonna have like a, a fork off of it with two leaves instead of just one like this one. Mm -hmm. And right here, there's gonna be a little fruit. This one has already fallen off because we're catching this a week or two late. Mm -hmm. But that fruit, and that fruit only, can be used, you can cut it up and boil it in some water, add some sugar, and you have a lemonade sort of drink. Son of a gun. Very refreshing. Now, the plant itself is not edible, mm -hmm. just the fruit. Just the fruit, just so the stay fruit. away from the rest of it. Stay away from the rest Won't of it. Won't do you any good. Mm -mm. Well, I'll tell you what, Jennifer has come out and shared with us a bunch of stuff. I've been grazing yes, off the I'm land. Cool. You know what, you really could. I mean, yeah. if you look around you, I mean, and you were really hungry and had nothing going on. Yeah, definitely. You could put definitely. a little on the belly. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming out and sharing Thank you for having us. me, it's been great. Quick and easy, easy peasy. 
And you made it beautiful with the red buds. I forgot about how good those are. Well, I think now's the time to tell you about our Facebook page, Tim Palmer's Country Kitchen. Facebook page, like it, follow us, see where we're going, what we're doing. We have the best Facebook friends in the world. We talk back and forth constantly. And timfarmerscountrykitchen.com, new gussied up website. You can go in there and find recipes you've never seen before. Check out some older episodes. And remember, it's all about... Good times. Good friends. And good eats. Mm. Yummy. Can I chrome magnet on this? I need a spoon for that. Mm-hmm. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore, Kinco Farm Fence Supplies, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by the city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come back home to Stanford. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Edward Jones, this is Shirley speaking. How may I help you? Oh, hey, Neil. How are you? How was the trip? With nearly 7 million investors. He's right here. Hold on one sec. You'd expect us to have a highly skilled call center. Kevin, Neil Hawley's on line one. Okay, great. And we do. It's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing.